So, I'm here today for the sole purpose to do two things. One, to clear Lynn's name of any idea that she has been discriminatory or such to myself or my campaign based on my sexuality. Uh, she's been respectful to the process that we met with last week. There were no trinkles, I felt, of any discriminatory behavior for her. Um, so I am deeply sorry that the headlines are from yesterday create uh, accusations that she would do, and that's not the case. In my press release, the, the bottom line is, I am an independent candidate, I am gay, and the city clerk is blocking me from getting this nomination to be on the primary ballot under the UIP mayor. Uh, here are the facts. In the press release yesterday, I went on to quote Harvey Milk, and we know Harvey Milk is, uh, is passed on, he was assassinated by an insider because he was an openly gay candidate. So, openly gay candidates face challenges uh, stemming from something as simple as being blocked to be put on a nomination uh, uh, primary ballot. So, the facts are, last week I met with Lynn Bouchard, with a, one of my volunteer staff members, and we sat and we looked at and reviewed the signatures uh, that were in question. We submitted over 200 signatures. There was clear indication from my campaign that we did due diligence and were conservative with what signatures we felt were disqualified. So after those signatures, Lynn was correct in saying there was 176 to look at. She could only certify 143. I asked that we meet and review the signatures. We garnered another five signatures. There were other signatures that had been questioned. Signatures that in our database showed that voters were unenrolled. In her database, it was it was a Democrat or a Republican. How can we prove that there was any fluctuation of data? When we entered the meeting, I asked questions in regards to, um, one, if a signature is not legible, can a voter next to it uh, print their name to assist in their intent in signing a paper? She said, that is correct. One signature was of such, and she did approve them. The other thing was, she kept insisting that she just can't certify the two signatures that we were looking at. We could have created a buffer of more signatures, but in honesty and good faith, I couldn't decipher some of these signatures that were not legible. However, the two signatures in question that I did put in on, uh, on our letterhead and submitted to Ball. For two signatures that were legible, we know who the voters are. We have affidavits ready if needed to get this signed. It was Lynn that encouraged us to push forward with the writing campaign and that she would call a, a meeting of the Board of Registrars and we would be notified of such meeting. We weren't. Um, I found through the telegrams reporting last night that she had made a statement. She had brought the Board of Registrars in, one by one, to look at the signatures and see um, if they agree with her. By my understanding, two did and one did not. Well, we weren't part of this process. It was not an open meeting, because under open meeting law, it is only required if three or more members meet to call for an open meeting. So that was a clear tactic, in my opinion. After Tuesday, we were told that she got a directive from the State Elections Division, Michelle Terracini, that if she cannot certify the signatures, it stops there. And encourage, if we want, we can pursue potential court um, action or run a sticker campaign. Well, here are the facts about that. I'm going to pursue a sticker campaign, and here's why. This past fall, we saw a city employee run for a um, school committee. And Simply, you can't be a city employee running for a municipal office. What happened is it caused a $37,000 election, a special election that just happened, where one person ran for the seat, 300 people went out and voted, I went out and voted, and at the end of the day, the taxpayers had to pay that because whether it being the mayor and this person in the fall running for such a position, they knew that they should not have to ran. So now here we are, we're faced with, do I cost the taxpayers money? because I want to pursue this in court. And quite frankly also, my campaign has enough resources to sustain ourselves for it to be a viable campaign 
for marketing and mailings and that kind of stuff. We're not fundraising to go to court over. I'm a United Independent candidate seeking to be nominated to proceed to the general election. We're going to do that with the sticker campaign. At the end of the day, this stinks. And it stinks real bad. And I'm sick and tired of possible corruption going on in City Hall and in Beacon Hill. Someone in Boston is communicating to her, in my feeling, that she should not allow these signatures. If that's not the case, and she's purely not allowing those two signatures that could be allowed to get me to the 150 mark, that's also unethical. I don't agree with this. It's wrong. This is not a fair process. This is exactly what the people are sick of across from across this country. People are sick of this across the Commonwealth. And people are getting sick of the stuff in Lemonstone. Lynn has served this city as city clerk for decades. She has been a great public servant. I hate to think what other things have been blocked over years through election processes or whatnot because maybe she's getting some pressure. If she is not getting pressure from people, not that this is happening. So the bigger concern and the point of my press release was the facts of our meetings, how they went down, what we were encouraged to do. We followed those steps. In the press release, I, uh, I attached the candidate's guide and what Mass General Law says in, in far as appeals process. We followed those steps. Just today, before this press conference, I checked the mail. Just today, I get a letter from the city clerk. There's a problem. And yesterday, these board of registrars were called in one by one. I was not made aware of this. I was not present. I could have brought affidavits. Either way, I'm being stonewalled, and I don't like it. And people in this community need to know that regardless of how good you look or what you do or how long you've served, you've got to do the right thing. My campaign has been transparent on anything that's been asked of us. If people in the public have questions, they can come to our office. They can call us. They can email us. I will meet with them. I will talk about whatever concerns they have. Today I'm focused on the process is being messed with and it's affecting my nomination to be United Independent Candidate. Quite frankly, I'm gonna I'm gonna forge forward with this campaign. We're gonna move on to the general election. With that said, effective immediately, I want to see Lynn Bouchard step down. She needs to submit her resignation to the mayor of the city, and the mayor needs to accept it. The assistant city clerk or whatever their process should be. Uh, uh, put in place to take over these responsibilities. I'm sorry, but clearly, no hesitation am I, uh, with, without hesitation, will I say that Lynn is not a discriminatory person. At no point have I ever felt that she was. The bigger point here is we have an economy that needs to be growing. We have an education uh, system that has an inadequate funding formula that needs to be talked about and drafted. We do live in Massachusetts. It's not as liberal as it was yesterday or the year before. Conservatism is growing in Massachusetts. The state is becoming more and more purple. My campaign as a progressive campaign is being stonewalled. I don't like this. None of my staff likes this, or my volunteers, or my supporters, and my donors. They're tired of politics as usual. I ain't bringing them. I'm tired of politics as usual. I'm not a usual politician. I'll be the first one to say there are many things in my life, personal and professional, that yes, I could have done better. Yes, we could have probably created a press release yesterday that did not acknowledge how people looked at me as a independent I could have chosen not to quote an icon from California who was assassinated by an insider because they did not want to vote for the candidate serving in office. I could have made those choices. Absolutely. In no way, shape, or form should it have been that she, or I am saying she's discriminatory, not whatsoever. But as 